Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com, and we're here at Killens Farms with David Killens. They run a custom combining operation, and you know, this whole gibberella mess out in the countryside is just everybody is ripping their hair out because you pull up to the elevator and they won't dump this load and they will dump that load and oh my gosh what do we do about it finally i think we have at least some suggestions that maybe we can get this crop down in toxin level to the point where you can get it unloaded and you don't always have this hassle so david's the combine expert and believe it or not this is where it actually is going to start so david you run a combine a long time. How many acres in a year would you actually combine? Well, we run about 14,000 to 15,000 acres a year. We do about 6,000 of corn, 5,000 of beans, and it depends on the wheat between two to four. Yeah, so, so you are a combine guru. Pretty much. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. I love this. So, so tell us, like, let's start right from the word go. You've been in fields with high toxin corn, right? You've yep. had corn on trailers that they wouldn't dump. So what, do you, what have you done? What modifications, what do we need to do to get a clean corn crop delivered, as clean as possible? So on these deer combines, you have to make sure all your settings are tweaked perfectly, your concaves, everything's set right. So, so when, wait, just stop there. Concave set right. What is concave set right? Make sure they're level and... Uh, Wide open? Make sure you're wide, well, you can do wide open. Uh, we set ours wide open, that way you don't have uh, so many fines in that where it grinds it together. Right, so, so the real key, all the way through this, the real key, and we've talked about this before, it's the fines. So we're doing everything we can to take out the fines. So we're gonna slow the rotor down, David, as well? You slow the rotor down so you're not grinding it up so bad. You open wide open, that way your cob's coming out nice and you're not getting any uh, crushed kernels where all the little bits are gonna fall in through your sieve and then into your clean grain. Yep, cool. So what do we do? So we assume that everybody's leveled their concave and, and you know, if you're like Johnson with the grand, you know, 1985 <laughs> white 8700 combine, I still gotta open my concave up and slow my cylinder right down. It works, it doesn't matter what the combine is, no. but, but there's other tweaks. So what else have you done that I think is kind of cool? So on these machines, there's a screen underneath that uh, is just underneath your uh, clean grain elevator auger. We put the screens under and if your corn is under 25%, your fines will flow through and drop out of them. And then also on the clean grain elevator, there's uh, the big screen here. And if you see, it's got the holes in it, not like the normal ones where they're totally solid. And they actually let the fines drop out of them too. Yeah, so just before we move on from that, because I find it really interesting, like when I grew up on combines, we always ran these perforated screens in soybeans and corn. It was just standard practice. But this is not the case anymore. A lot of combines don't have that. Plus, the perforated screen underneath the auger itself, that's a, a, a new addition, so to speak, right? Yeah. And you mentioned 24%, 25% moisture, that it only works if you have dry enough corn. What happens if I have higher moisture corn? So if you have higher moisture corn, then uh, it actually acts like a cheese grater and it will grade the corn up and actually cause more fines. So you gotta be careful on your moisture and also the way the corn is too. If it's heavier test weight, it's actually, it seems like it's stronger and it doesn't grind as bad as the lighter test weighted corn. Yeah, and so that's really one of the keys, I think, and, and David's hit on it in, a, in kind of just his observations. When we get highly infected corn, then typically it's, it's lighter test weight. The kernels aren't as intact. If you have heavy test weight corn, then it tends not to break up as much. And remember, it's all about fines. So we get the high test weight corn, not as big an issue. Yep. So talk to us about the, the return elevator, because I think this is very, very cool. So you, you do have the perforated screen here on the return elevator as well. Yep. But what else do you do? So in some cases where the VOM was uh, over 10 parts per million, we would actually take the tailing elevator door off and let all the corn and that fall to the ground. We've seen it where you lose, maybe a third of it's actually good corn, but a lot of it is fines and the small kernels at the tip of the cob. And it all depends how you set your uh, sieve. Do you want it to actually blow out and it will come out of here? 
So you lose two to three bushel on the ground, but you save a lot more with the amount of vom that's on the ground. Yeah, so, so I can live with losing a bushel or two if I can get that vom down to, you know, the point where it's received and I don't get the big discount. So one other thing that you did talk about, talk about what about the, the chafer and the wind blast in the combine? So that's another big thing. The way you set, we have a dual zone chaffer in these 680s. And uh, at the very back is a 16 or 18 inch section where you can actually adjust it with a wrench and close it or open it. Now, when you're dealing with VOM, you close it and you turn your airflow all the way up. That allows it like a garden hose effect where you put your finger over the garden hose and it actually sprays harder. Same thing with the wind. It'll uh, blow the, so any corn that comes down, because all the smaller kernels are what you want to get rid of, it'll drop it down to the sieves, but the airflow will actually push it to the back of the sieves and then that's where it comes out of here. So if you have that closed, it's actually allowing more airflow up through your sieve and your chaffer. So, so what you're telling me is that John Deere should have put a bigger wind blast in there to begin with, and that would have, then we wouldn't have to close off the, the chaffer. Pretty hey, much. In, in, in my 8700, the back section is actually adjustable by itself, and I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna close it right off and see if I can't get more wind to, to take, because it's the light stuff, right? That's what is infected. So you did that in a field that was really quite badly infected. Uh, you, the first load was what for, for uh, Dawn value? So the load was around 10.4, and they said we were allowed to dump that one, but that was the only one we could take. So we did all the adjustments with the screen, the fan, the chaffer and all that. And the next load we took was either between 4.5 and 5.4. And so, wow, that's a 50% reduction. So what does the research say? If you go way back, Dr. Art Shasma, Ridgetown campus, University of Guelph, he did a bunch of this research in, in the mid nineties with, with wheat and with corn. And what he found was that if you could take really infected corn and clean it, it was a 40% reduction. So that sort of lines up with, with what you're, you're finding. Other growers are actually running the corn over a rotary cleaner or some kind of cleaning system after the combine. And one in particular, the grower took it from nine to 6.5 when he ran it over the cleaner. And they then tested the fines. The fines were 55%. And so, wow, the, the fines, we got to get out of them out of there. But if I can save running it over the cleaner at the elevator or in my field by doing it at combine, man, why would you not do it there? Right, David? Yep. Yeah. That's Absol what we find. So. Absolutely. Way cool. Finally, some good suggestions about how to make this crop marketable. Grow great corn. Just make sure it clean. Thanks very much, David. Thank you.